Today we're looking at a Mills Novelty Company upright floor model slot machine. It's called a Mills Dewey 2 bits or a 2 bits Dewey machine from 1899 through the very early 1900s. The way you play this game is that you're betting on six different colors. There's mostly red and black on the wheel, so they pay two for one, 50 cents. Less green, less yellow, white, and blue. There's only two blues. So they pay $1.25, $2.55, and $10 accordingly. So if I bet on all six, I'm guaranteed a winner, but I could lose money on this low payout. So you coin it up, bet on the colors you want, push in this button to load them. So there, the top six quarters are what I bet, and crank the handle. Right? Dropped on black. Black paid me two quarters. There are colored flags that pop up at the end of the game cycle, which tells you which you've bet on. This indicator right here is pointing towards what has come up the winner. And we'll bet this time just on the first three. So you can see that we drop in here and these are empty so we know we've only bet on these and when I crank the handle the flags go down and when we stop the flags pop up showing me I bet on those three colors. We stopped on red which won two quarters. Some history on this machine, it's called 2-bits because it took a quarter to play and back in the day 8-bits was one dollar so one quarter of a dollar was 2-bits. And to further make the patron understand, those are actual bridle bits or what a horse would have and you know 1900 everybody had horses not many cars so to see those two bits there that further exemplified a quarter play and it's named after Admiral Dewey who became famous by having a victory during the Spanish-American War so we're going to take you through this machine show you how it works and some adjustments that can be made to on. remove the mechanism from the case you'll have to take the crank handle off on the front of the case and then this wooden rod going across the stick needs to be taken out and there's two screws right here which attach the upper coin casting that goes into the headboard to this lower coin casting which is part of the mech so then once you have that all done there's clamps that run across from front to back and hold the frame. There's a wing nut there, you loosen that up and this clamp will come off, that clamp will come off and then this spring which goes up and grabs onto the payout bar that pulls down when you pay out, pulls on that leather strap, you need to take that spring off and now it'll be completely free and you can pull it out backwards. The only other thing you'll have to do is the color flags that are in the front on the other side of this casting as you slide straight back those flags will tend to hit the upper casting that's not going any place so as you tip it or as you uh, slide it backwards you'll need to tilt it and tip the, the front end forward pull this back so that those flags will clear and the best way to remove this is to first coin it up all six coins and play it so that the flags are up but there's other bars or rods that will be down and those rods would stick up higher than the flags so best way I found to get this out with the least amount of interference up here is to play a full six coins first before you start taking it out here's the mechanism removed from the case I'll bet on red and black and green. Cycle it.
when a coin is inserted it drops down to this level lines up with these six fingers no coins there so the fingers are allowed to go into the slots when a coin is there it would stop the fingers not let this drop a different angle showing those fingers going in and this lever dropping and what that does is comes down to here and there's a a dog I will call it that is allowed to let this go past it so when I am cranking on the handle that's when I'm turning and the piston there allows it to return back nice and slow so it's not slamming but this dog is not staying engaged until a coin is inserted and when I drop that coin in it ends up where that finger is so now when I crank the lever that coin is gonna hit and as I crank that will stay engaged and now in addition to this turning it's bringing a lot of other arms back with it because I'm engaged right there and I will stay engaged until this roller falls off the shoulder and allows that to pivot and for this to pivot up the dog goes up and off of there and then that's what kicks off the mechanism so I'm cranking up the whole mechanism until I slide right off of here I'll disengage and back and that'll jump forward and I have a rubber pad right here for when this is thrown back it hits that to take a little bit of the shock out coins from a previous play will be sitting at this level and they will be holding back these six fingers and those fingers are part of the payout unit and the slide mechanisms that come across to determine which colors you've bet on so if I'm going to insert another coin we'll go on the same color again and the coin drops in at this level where that finger is to feel it but as I crank the mechanism this one will be pushed over off of this lever fall down into the coin tube and then the next one will be brought down into its place and what pushes this over so that it can fall out here is this bell crank assembly and these little fingers that go through and one sits at each quarter so this close-up will show you that as I crank the handle this previous quarter will be kicked out and go down to the coin chute this is the coin currently in play it'll be dropped down into that position there's the crank All right, you can see that right here, there's a finger going through. It's pushing this quarter off to the side so it can drop past this finger. There it goes. Now continuing to crank, we'll let this one drop down into that position. Okay, there it is. Dropped into position, ready to fall on top of this. And I'm going to stop the fan So that after kickoff we can talk about this notice that this finger is not allowed to go fully forward because it's hitting the side of the quarter or well, I don't have any quarters in any of the others so the next fingers will be able to fully slide all the way forward okay this finger and all the rest slid 
much farther than this one. This one is held back by that quarter. The first five fingers are all slid forward except for this one that has the coin blocking it. About right here on this finger there's a tab going through and each one of these fingers has a tab going through and going up slightly diagonally across these different rods or fingers. There's tabs underneath and they go to the underside of this plate where looking at the underside of the plate all of these rods coming across have notches in them again going diagonally from lever to lever so that they're not in line and hitting each other but each one works independently from the one next to it at the start of a cycle with all of these rods pushed back that means that all of the tabs are not engaged with these rods underneath they're just sitting off to the side of them so right when the mechanism is getting ready to pay out these first five that were allowed to go all the way forward because there was no coin what happened was their pegs that go through are allowed to go and line up with the rods going horizontally underneath so none of those rods can move the only rod that would be allowed to move is this one here on the very end because its peg did not line up with it its back allowing this rod to move if it needed to this is a view from the other side and I still have those six rods that are going this way and then horizontally underneath this is looking at those rods from the other side and so one of these rods is for each color that you're betting on the low color starting over here red and black that only pay out two and then we go green yellow white and blue the big pay is here blue is what I bet on and blue is the only one that did not engage so this blue lever would be allowed to move and slide if it had to if we would have won on blue well what causes this to want to slide if we do have a winner is down in here there's a series of discs there's one disc for each color and getting a view of those discs from this side you can see that the first disc has many many slots in it because there's many possibilities for red and black to win so red and black first two have lots of slots but then going on to green yellow white or blue they have fewer and fewer slots what the slot does is when the game is over and we're ready to pay out these will attempt to go forward and see if they can line up or if they found one of those slots so if I have a winner on red then this is going to fall into that slot but if I fall in one of the other colors then this hits the outside diameter of that round disc and is not allowed to move and so if it was allowed to move in that would allow that horizontal rod going across to the other side to move all the way in which translates on this side to the rod moving all the way this way and pushing on this so we'll talk about this in just a second but you'll notice that all of these rods are different lengths the tips of them sticks out at different lengths while we're sitting here at rest so if a rod were allowed to be moved out the different lengths rods would 
cause this lever to move a different amount outwards. And now that goes down to here, over, and it's going to regulate how much this wheel turns. I've coined it up and I have all six coins in so I guaranteed a winner. I'm going to crank it and that rod we were talking about comes down to here and it's going to move a certain amount in this direction based on those horizontal rods from up above how far out they push this equates to how far in this goes and that's going to determine how much of a payout we get. Okay, so here we go. All right, we got just a little two pay, two coins paid out. Now it was only two coins because this rod that moves, the distance that it moves will line up with stopping at one of these pegs. There's a peg right here and then a peg here, but this peg is gonna go up and hit that rod and stop. All right, the next peg is not in the same plane or exactly lined up with that. It's pushed out a little farther. And then this peg down below is pushed out even farther on the diameter than the previous. So what that means, if I back out here and take a look, is that depending on how far this lever is allowed to slide, if it were to pivot outwards or slide farther and let that peg get past it, then the wheel would continue to turn until we got to the next peg. If this was moved out even further, then that second peg would get past and it wouldn't stop till it got to the third peg. So the different colors that you end up landing on, the higher payout you're going to get means this lever goes farther out and lets more and more pegs get past it until it finally stops. So let's see that again with how far that wheel spins, but this time I'll bet on white, which is a larger payout, $5 worth. And as I crank it, I'm stopping the clock motor fan so I can line up a white winner, the color white, which is going to give me the $5 payout. And we should see this wheel travel much farther now and go past several pegs because this is, arm is thrown so far out, letting the pegs get past and only stopping at the one that's way on the outside diameter of this wheel. Alright, so you saw all of these pegs get past this arm and only the peg that came up underneath that was at a farther outside diameter, farther out on the wheel, was stopped by that. So we'll actually reset this and show it to you in slower motion. Okay, you see all those pegs going by? And there it stops. So this peg got by, didn't hit. This peg which is even farther in and this peg which is way in. So this one is for the red and black and then the, the green is here, yellow is here and coming up from the bottom here's the white to stop it. Right there. This larger wheel with the pegs on it, the outside teeth are connected through a gear to this smaller wheel, but the smaller wheel has raised tangs on it, and those raised tangs, as this wheel spins, right up at the top it's sitting in the coin tube, and each little tang as it flies by catches the edge of the next quarter and shears it off and throws it out here to be delivered to 
to the player. So as I do a little payout here, you see this spin, it's spinning this, and these tangs are going to shear off a couple quarters out to me holding in my hand here. So there you go. Uh, this little spring-loaded lever right here, or finger, prevents this from turning backwards. It goes back in rest right there, but doesn't let it go any further as the wheel resets and then lets it shear off more quarters during the next payout. A view from up underneath. This is that smaller wheel and then right there is the edge of a quarter and it's got a slot at the bottom of the coin tube here is slotted so as this wheel and the parts of the wheel that are sticking up just a tiny bit come by they'll just grab the edge of that and push the quarter right out okay I'll just try to do one here there grab the quarter slide it out if we have a big payout it does a whole bunch in rapid fire succession The payout viewed from a different angle. I'm resetting it slightly. And that wheel turned to shear off the quarters. There's a second fan here in front to regulate the speed of how fast this goes so we're not shearing off quarters too quickly. Here I'll pay out a little bit more. There's a leather strap, and that leather strap unwinds from this cam up here, depending on how far we pay out. That's how far that unwinds. And then there's a spring, a coiled spring in here, that helps return all of this and pull up when I reset to the next play. This is resetting, and so that spring has to wind that wheel back up again. The leather belt that was on there was showing its age, so I went down and bought just a regular genuine leather belt, like to hold up your pants. And it's an eighth of an inch thick, and it's uh, soft and pliable. And from that belt I cut out two of these. This is my extra one. And this is my other one that I installed. Now the length of this belt is critical because right here, this is supposed to rest on it when the game is over. And if I pull this lever back so that it can get free of it, it should just want to go down about a quarter of an inch and be past it and now the weight is on the belt but when you recycle the mechanism it goes up that falls in and you don't quite have all the tension on this belt it's uh, pretty pretty uh, stretched out but but no real force on it and the reason you don't want any force on this is because that's being transferred over to the front here and putting all the force on this payout wheel Alright, so if this arm is not resting on this little ledge right here, if it's actually, there's a gap in here because your belt is too short, raising that up, if you have a gap in there, then all of that force is resting here on this lever, holding back the payout wheel. And this couldn't take that amount of force over time, you'd break something. So it's important that that piece right there be resting. Now, in order to make that adjustment, because, you know, the leather is going to stretch over time. Some belts are slightly different lengths. 
And so in order to adjust this properly, right here where it's mounted, that leather's mounted, there's a, a wheel there, or a little uh, peg that, that that's screwed into. And on the other side of that is a nut. Come over here. Right there, that nut, and it's got a screwdriver slot in it. The other side of that is that little wheel that the belt is coming down and mounting to. So you can loosen this nut and turn the screw and you'll rotate that peg and that'll take up or let go uh, the length of this belt until you get the right adjustment over here where you're resting. So with this arm resting on this little ledge over here in the belt I've got just a little bit of slack, very little and if I move this wheel, you can see I got just a tiniest bit of slack, but it's not taunt and stretched out. A little bit of movement here in this payout wheel, and we're good to go. This outer disc with the teeth in it is used to spin or kick off the big color wheel in the front, and all of the internal discs with the different slots. When I wind up the mechanism, it pulls back on this. And this right here comes and pushes, raises this up. And this is a little spring-loaded secondary finger, which is always falling down in and grabbing till it gets all the way back. And then when we kick off and the discs are freed up and allowed to spin, then this is under spring tension, which takes this whole wheel and quickly starts to rotate it so the color wheel in the front starts to spin and as this rotates all the way back around here there's a lever right here which when it touches this protrusion it pushes on it and disengages so that now the wheel can freewheel. So let's watch that happen as I crank it up. Let's watch the lower half of the rear of the mechanism as we cycle it through. A clever feature they designed into this is that the coin tube where all the quarters stack up, when it's filled quarters could potentially fall in and stand up on their edge or get jammed and not lay down flat and so attached to the center wheel right behind here where you can't see there is a triangular shaped cam and then as you just saw this is loose but there's uh, some walls or some of the casting here goes down past the triangle shaped cam and it's positioned to where when that cam turns it hits the walls of this casting causing it to vibrate back and forth which shakes the tube and causes all the coins to settle down nice and flat so there's no jams. I've zoomed in so let's watch that occur. On this side, let's cycle it so you can watch those vertical rods and how they fall in and cause those horizontal rods to slide over. In this case, I'm going to crank it up, stop the fan, and line it up so I get a red winner. So this first finger right here is what's going to slide into the disc. Now the wheel can rotate because I'm holding the clock, but what will lock the wheel into position is this finger right here, or this long vertical rod, 
and right here this grabs goes in and grabs a tooth so I'll let the clock go just enough till we've grabbed and stopped the wheel right there so then when this pushes in not only did it work those slides and those levers on the top of the mechanism we were looking at earlier to determine which one of these horizontals can go but also now I'm locked in and ready for when all of these fingers or these rods get let go and they slide forward the red one will be allowed to go farther because it's going to find the red notch. So here the one on the very end that little tab sticking out was allowed to go in it found that slot and that's what let the horizontal one come all the way across to the other side of the mechanism and operate that wheel and how far the wheel could go. So to recap what just happened when the wheel was spinning and the clockwork mechanism moved some levers and gears on this side over to a point where this vertical was allowed to let go and lock in that tooth it lined up with a slot on this first disc so that once these were allowed to go they all hit the outside diameters except this one found the slot and went in now this vertical that came across the top here it moved this lever on top which moved out of the way to free up all of these six rods that were going this way looking for coins inserted so where I had coins inserted these stopped against the coin which means that the tab that goes through it's attached to this the tab that goes through since it stopped it was not allowed to go over and hold this horizontal rod from pushing over on the other side all the rest of these were held back because of their tabs being allowed to go all the way forward no coin there so they go forward and the tabs go into position and hold these so that they cannot move forward but the one on the end which is for the red payout that did go and slide way forward and viewed from the other side because it was allowed to slide way forward here it is poking out and remember that the ends of all of these are different lengths so this particular one is causing this lever to be deflected its maximum as far out as it can go and that comes down and then determines that the very first peg is going to be stopped so that peg is only two quarters away as this turns if we would have had another one of these horizontals go out instead they would have not pushed this vertical out as much so this would have been back this way allowing that two quarter pay to get past it and the next peg to stop or the next one to the next one whichever as we've talked about before the highest payout which is color blue the ten dollar win is this first lever and that's the only one that does not push on this rod if you can see that one would go clear past it this would never move however that would let this wheel go and it would pass up all of those pins and what would happen is on this other side the pins are all on the front side on this back side there's a piece right here this little tank sticking out and that would actually go one full rotation and then stop on here so one full rotation would be a ten dollar payout and that's how you'd stop it in that case when you have the big winner this wheel is the one that gets stopped by this little peg right here it goes in grabs a tooth as the wheel spinning 
and that's what determines where you stop and if you're going to line up with any of those slots in the discs inside. But as I rotate this, you'll notice there's a 50 stamped here, a 25, there's a 200. Okay, that's the number of coins. 200 coins is the big $10 winner. But what this is, is showing you where on the back side of each place there's a number. On the back side is a little device that I can flip into position. This is spring loaded and I can lock it in position here. All right. And once it's in position, there's a screw hole. I can put a screw in to hold it. But notice how this tooth now has been covered with a little plate. And that actually is the tooth where this little lever would come in or this protrusion, this little tooth here would grab in and sit and be the big $10 winner. And by me throwing this little device into place, screwing it in, I can never stop on the $10 winner. As this moves forward to grab a tooth, it'll either fall in in front or right after, but I've just bugged out the $10 winner now. So the slang word for that was a bug, but Mills Novelty Company called this a percentage adjuster. So you were adjusting the percentage in the house's favor because you weren't going to ever hit that $10 winner now. And just like I can bug out that, I could come around here and I could bug out the 100, a 25, a 50. I could bug out as many of those higher paying ones as I wanted to, to put the odds of higher percentages in the house's favor for making money. On this payout wheel, there's a lever on the left hand side. I'm looking at the front of the mech now and this lever can slide in and out. Its purpose is to lock that payout wheel when you start to crank up the mechanism so that it cannot turn in addition to this one not letting it go backwards. It's like a double fail safe but that will get pushed in and hold on to the wheel by this lever here which comes up and is pushed on other levers over here as you're cranking up the mechanism and all this gets reset and pulled back out of the way. Alright, try to get in a position where we can watch that happen as I crank the mechanism, wind it up, this will drop in here to prevent the payout wheel from spinning and what will cause it to come back is through the series of levers here and so let me crank it that gets thrown into position. All this side's getting reset. And because we didn't have a winner, none of these vertical rods pivoted, pushing the horizontals forward. That also means that they didn't push against a bar here, which is part of a, a frame assembly that comes down to right there and that's what pushes on this rod to pivot it and then pulls that finger back away from the payout so in other words because we didn't get a winner that stays engaged to prevent this from turning it's a safety so you don't get a payout with no winner Another way to state that is that this lever here has to stay engaged against the wheel stopping it from turning otherwise you're going to get a payout even when there's no winner. But that lever stays forward stopping this wheel because it didn't get pulled back here. That's because I didn't have any of these go forward. If any one of them goes forward to indicate a winner then the frame I was talking about was this metal casting 
goes around in a square like a frame. Any of these fingers that go forward or levers that go forward will push on the top of that frame moving it forward which pivots the bottom backwards and pulls this back activating this. We clear and then once we're clear of it then this will turn but what stops it turning is those pegs on that bigger wheel. Here are all six coins loaded up. This is current play and down below are the six quarters from the previous play. I'm going to crank it up and you can watch this pivot back and forth. Take the bottom row and push it out into the coin tube and the top row will fall down into position and it will block each one of these as the coin comes to rest on it so that it cannot move forward and interfere or grab the horizontal bars. So all six coined up, we guaranteed a winner. And you saw these drop down into, now they are the played position. Game over. In addition to this lever, which rests up against the payout wheel and hits one of these protrusions. This is the one that shears off quarters. So this next one down here is being grabbed by this lever. In addition to that happening to prevent payout when you don't win, there is also this payout arm which comes up and is resting right here so this is that long vertical rod that gets moved out of the way if you have a payout and so that will let this arm come off of that little ledge right there go past it and proceed down and pay out so right here if that pushes away it'll let that come past like that and then the only thing stopping the payout now is that lever pushing against the payout wheel all right, we're looking underneath the mechanism and I've coined up a winner. I'm holding the fan so I'm going to let it go and let the payout begin. So once again slowly this arm is up and it is allowed to come down and stretch out that piece of leather strap and spin the payout wheels. An additional function of these six horizontal levers as they are allowed to slide forward or not is that on this side there are pegs that come through here in six places and these are actually the tips, the very end of those levers I just showed you coming through the front and so I'm going to crank it without any coins in and that allows those levers to all move as far forward as they can so here we go now you see I'm retracting backwards but with no coins they all pop back out so that when this lets go all of these are held up which each one of these is a vertical lever that goes up and would push on the flags the six colored flags across here and so what just happened with no coins is all of these levers are still in the up position 
which equates to all of the flags being down and there's no flag shown because no coins were bet. So now if I place a couple coins in let's say on the first and the second that's red and black and let's just go all the way over here to the end blue so that's first second and last have coins in it this time if I crank it up they all go back but because we placed coins here here and here those levers in the back were kept back which also allowed those payout slides to come across but in addition holding the very tips of those backwards allowed these to fully drop one two and the last one dropped and that would equate to popping the three flags up so you would see that you bet on red black and blue the coin head always shows you the last several quarters that have been played so if I were to bet just on the first color red and then push in this lever you can see that was my quarter played but what has dropped down into the mechanism is actually three plays old on that color so here now if I bet on the last one this will drop down clearing it out but this coin will let the lowest one drop all the way through so there's my quarter to go coin up the mechanism here I'll bet on the first three So you can always see which ones you bet there, and the three coins go on to coin up the mech. If you need to service this coin mechanism, you have to remove four screws. I've taken them out already, right there, there, and here. And then you have to pivot it outwards at a bit of an angle, and then slide this out sideways. And now you can get to the back if you need to. So to watch this operate from the back I'll drop in six coins and they go right there and then when you push on the lever this bar across here will move these long rods and shift them over and that's what causes the coins to move down one and rest in this position. So here we go. It's a two-part action. Pushing in causes it to go one step. Coins drop and get ready to fall through. Letting go completes the action. And six coins drop on out. Now this time I'll only drop in one coin. So when I push the lever these all reset but when I let go only this one moved back and let the coin come through the other stay in their cocked position when the color wheel kicks off and starts to turn it's gonna stop by that peg falling into one of the teeth right there on this larger wheel and you don't want the color wheel to be spinning quickly when that drops in, that pin drops in and grabs the teeth because that's just going to be really hard on the teeth for it to be going very quickly. So you want this thing to spin off but then you want it to start to slow down and just be moving a little bit when it's time for that to lock in and grab it. And so in order to regulate how quickly this wheel starts to slow down and just barely be moving by the time you drop in 
you have a thumb screw right here and this is easily accessible from the back so you just open it up and you turn this thumb screw and what it does is it comes through and pushes on this spring finger and that spring finger is pushing against that wheel so the more you screw it inward the more pressure you're pushing on that and that'll cause it to slow down friction but if it's slowing down too quickly or stopping before you lock in then you can pull this back and let it freewheel a little bit more. For more information, visit GameRoomRepair.com.